Hi everyone, it's Ryan 1940 here, and welcome back to Enigma's Cold War server. Currently, we are getting started up at the farm, so let's talk about what this video is going to really highlight. Now, what I love about this place and PvP in general within DCS is being able to look through all the player-driven events that surround you via the track system, and then discover the organic interconnectivity you just can't get against the computer AI. This sortie was originally meant to be tacked on to the last video because it was relatively quick in duration. As I was going through the footage for it though, there was a realization that I was not going to fit this all into a 5-7 to seven minute bit to add on. The web of events and the dynamic way in which they unfold and ultimately affect you I find fascinating and oftentimes when you fly live you don't understand how it's all coming together. I pieced together this video of highlights from what I thought was a simple live sortie, but we'll discover it was the byproduct of a remarkable set of events from other players. Alright, our startup is complete and we're set to head out. While we start on our transit, let's take a look around the battle space and see what else is going on. At Krasnodar Center, the A-10s are starting up at their ramp. By now, the server has been running for a little bit, so we don't see the usual massive startup routine at airfields. Some A-10s are actually out there right now, and one is making unexpected contact with the enemy. Surprisingly, it seems the MiG-21 is unaware of the A-10's presence and continues onward at high speed. The A-10, however, briefly attempts to give chase, but ultimately turns back. Unfortunately, this MiG-15 has found it and is closing in for the kill. The Warthog, desperate to decrease weight, seems to pickle away some dumb bombs without jettisoning the rest. The weight still on the aircraft coupled with the hard maneuvering in close proximity to the ground leaves the pilot struggling to avoid the trees until it's all over. to the northeast, my HIP and another MI-8, we'll just refer to as HIP-66, are transiting to the front line, and before we get there, let's discuss our flight plan. You'll notice immediately there's a large lake we need to cross, so we'll fly to a point to make it the shortest, and then keep to three targets to the north of Krasnodar Peshkovsky. Because our site has done reconnaissance, we're able to know where to fly to for targets, which makes planning easy. Red 128, the MiG-15 behind the A-10 maneuver kill, circles past that crash site as a Vigan jumps into fight. As the Vigan jockeys for position, the same MiG-21 from earlier has returned to the area and enters the fray. Both Red 128 and a new approaching Mirage F1 are so focused on the Vigan and MiG-21 that they do not see each other. The Vigan will attempt to run and extend away, and as this occurs, the MiG-21 briefly chases, then turns back in to engage the Mirage F1.
Another MiG-15 joins in the chase, and despite the efforts of the Viggen to climb away to safety, the MiGs appear to be gaining. Another F-1 spots the distressed Viggen and appears to attempt a distraction with bursts from its main gun. It's unclear if this missile targeted anything as it sails harmlessly over the MiGs and detonates. Just like the missile, this Mirage sails harmlessly overhead in its recon configuration. We're just at the edge of our red sector in number 3 and approaching the blue front line. Having successfully crossed the lake, it's time for the flight to split up and go towards our individual targets. Yep, 66 can see I'm heading towards target number 1 and opts to head south to an encampment fairly close to Krasnodar Peshkovsky. Getting closer to target number one, I see HIP-282 has landed and is currently waiting for the troops to finish their ground assault. Keeping to my original plan, I opt to head to target number two to the north. At this point, red is looking very good. I was initially unaware of HIP-282, but after seeing it already at target number one, I was excited because I knew HIP-66, just like me, was on the way to knock out another camp. In a mere matter of minutes, a combined 18 ground targets could be eliminated. And after the initial attack, there are at least two other camps north of Krasnodar Peshkovsky that could be quickly eliminated as well. The prospect of rapidly destroying the front line before Blue even had recon on our front targets made victory seem inevitable. Flying onward to target number two, I get to witness HIP-282's troops conclude their assault. At about the same time, HIP-66 approaches their target dangerously close to the airport at Krasnodar Peshkovsky. Following 66's troop drop under fire, they head north to loiter, while off in the distance, 282 unfortunately crashes on takeoff, attempting to go and recover their own ground forces. At the same time, 5 miles to the north, I exercise one of the greatest joys of flying the hip, and that's rocketing into a landing zone.
Back at Krasnodar Center, the A-10 that suffered the maneuver kill is starting up again and now loaded with a notably lighter mix of weapons. Of all the weapons it's currently carrying, it will be the famed GAU-8 Avenger Cannon, which will put in the most work. On this map, the frontline attack aircraft like the Su-25 and A-10 are not permitted to have defensive air-to-air -air missiles. For the A-10 at least, the GAU-8 can be just as terrifying as any Sidewinder missile. The A-10 begins to taxi unaware of the impending calamity. The Vigan has finally made it back to the airbase. Like something out of a nightmare, Red 128 reappears, tormenting the A-10 once more while it tries to race to get airborne. Despite the fierce barrage from anti-aircraft guns and surface-to-air missiles, this MiG seems untouchable and immune. The Warthog gets airborne just as the Vigan who tried to avenge its previous death lands, ultimately successful in causing the demise of Red 128. The A-10 from Krasnodar has noticed the Sabre crash during the attack on HIP-66 and wastes no time trying to get its own gun on target. The HIP unfortunately doesn't seem to have eyes on the incoming danger. HIP-66 death is unknown to me at the time, 
At the moment, I was focused on attempting to recover my troops. Sometimes on the server, the drops get bugged, and this was unfortunately a case of it. When it happens, the target area explodes, but the troops don't fire off flares for recovery. This alone is alright, and in many ways, I wish this was an option that can be toggled, but regrettably, when they do this, they will not load into your helicopter after you've found them and land nearby. While I circle around searching for my troops, the A-10 knows enemy helicopters are operating in the area and begins inspecting each encampment. The flames from my destroyed target act as a beacon for the Warthog. Thank you so much for all the support you've been showing for this content. If you want to see more of it and help this channel grow, you know what to do. I did have a question before we go. Is it preferable to have videos longer like this one closer to 20 minutes or shorter videos around the 10 minute mark? Let me know below and thank you all for watching. Bye!